That's I can right. tell. So salt draws moisture out of vegetables. This is two teaspoons of salt. Tossing the salt with the onions obviously pulls out some of the liquid. And if we just let these onions sit, you'd get maybe a tablespoon or two of liquid, but that's not enough to really jumpstart the cooking and save some time. What we're gonna do is throw these in the microwave for five minutes, really get them to wilt down and get some of that moisture out. All right, so while those onions are in the microwave. We're gonna make a quick yogurt sauce, which is a traditional accompaniment to this dish. And here we have a cup of plain yogurt. We're gonna add half a teaspoon minced fresh garlic, half a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. We're just gonna mix this together. I'm gonna to let it sit and let those flavors develop a little bit. And I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and then those onions should be done. So the onions are done. I'll fetch them from the microwave. Mm. And now I'm gonna give them a quick rinse to help get some of that salt off before we start frying. All right, so we're good. I've rinsed off all that salt. So I have a question. You went to the trouble to microwave this mm -hmm. to get the water out, and then you rinsed it with water. <laughs> Aren't you putting the water back onto the onions that you tried to get out, or is it because it was the water inside the onion? You Aha, answered your finally. Own question. Okay. <laughs> but I am going to pat the water off the exterior of the onions before we put them in the oil and start frying. So we're going to add these onions right to the pot of cold oil, and that's a cup and a half cold vegetable oil. And they're going to fry in about half an hour. They're going to get nice and evenly golden and caramelized. You can see it's a lot of onions in the pot. And in fact, some are above the surface of the oil. But that's OK. They'll shrink really rapidly and fall below the surface of the oil and start frying. So I do have to ask, we're starting in cold oil. And normally when you fry things, mm -hmm. you start it in hot oil. That's right. So why cold oil? Well, you know, because we drove off all the moisture from inside the onions, they would brown really quickly in hot oil before they even got softened. So you got to start in cold oil so that they soften and turn brown at about the same time. Okay. All right, so while the onions continue to fry, we're going to focus our attention on the lentils and the rice. And we're going to use equal parts lentils and rice. This is one and a quarter cup brown or green lentils and one and a quarter cups basmati rice. What we're going to do is we're going to par cook the lentils and then we're going to combine it with the rice and make a pilaf. So, four cups of water. I'm going to add these lentils, which I've already rinsed and picked through to make sure there are no stones. I'm also going to add some salt. This is a teaspoon of table salt. We're just going to bring this to a boil, then reduce it to a simmer, and let them cook nice and gently till they're tender, which takes about 15 minutes. So the lentils are cooking, the onions are cooking, and now we're going to talk a little bit about the rice. So we're going to give the rice a little bit of a head start, too. We're just going to cover it with hot tap water and let it sit on the counter for about 15 minutes. And there we go. So these onions have been frying for about half an hour, and don't they look good? That, yeah, throw out the lentils <laughs> and the rice, we'll just eat the onions. I made sure there's a little extra in here because there's no way you can go through making this recipe without snacking on a few of these. That oil has a lot of flavor, so we're going to save it. We're going to use it to make the pilaf. So I'm just going to put the onions on a nice paper towel lined plate, help them drain a little bit. And the last component here is the rice, and it's been sitting here in the hot water. And I'm just going to drain off the water. And I'm going to give it a couple rinses with fresh water to make sure you really get all that starch out because that starch is what will turn the peel off clumpy unless you get rid of it. So under cool water, just going to swish it around till the water gets milky. And then I'll just pour off the milky water. And the rice really does stick to the bottom of the bowl, so you don't have to really worry about it going down the drain. And we're just going to do this a couple times. And this is a good generic trick for whenever you make rice peel off. You can see the water is getting clearer and clearer with every rinse. It doesn't have to be crystal clear. It just has to be a lot less milky than it was when we started. And there we go. And now I'm going to drain it through a strainer. Make sure you really get all that water out. Place that back on that bowl and let it drain while we start cooking the dish. And of course, this dish has a lot of spices in it. We're going to bloom the spices in some of this onion oil before we add the rice and the lentils. So I'm going to take three tablespoons of this flavorful oil and put it back over the heat three cloves of minced garlic, a teaspoon each cumin and coriander, half a teaspoon each cinnamon and allspice, quarter of a teaspoon black pepper, and a little bit of cayenne, just an eighth of a teaspoon to give it a little bit of a kick. And of course, we're going to cook these in the oil for about two minutes or so to really bloom their spices. Oh, so you can really start to smell those spices. Their flavor has really been bloomed into the oil. And now it's time to add the rice. You want to stir that in. We're just going to toast the rice in that oil with the spices. And when the rice gets coated with the oil, it really makes the pilaf nice and separated and also helps prevent with clumping. We're going to do this for about three minutes. 
So this is the basic peel-off method. That's Rice right. Rice with oil mm -hmm. before you add the water. I'm just gonna eat some onions while you cook. Mm, so that rice has been toasting in that pot for about three minutes and the edges of the rice you can see are starting to turn translucent and that's how you know it's time to add the liquid. And this is two and a quarter cups water. We're also going to add a little bit of salt and sugar, it's a teaspoon of each. And we're going to bring this to a boil over high heat. Oh, so this mixture has really come to a boil and you can really start to smell those spices. And now it's time to add the lentils if you wouldn't mind. And I had you drain those lentils earlier because they were just nice and tender. Mm. Thank you. We're going to stir those lentils right in. So now we're going to turn the heat down to low, put the lid on, and cook it like a pilaf until all the liquid has been absorbed and the rice is nearly tender, and that takes about 12 minutes. So this has been cooking for about 12 minutes, and it's time to take a peek to see if all the liquid's been absorbed. And I'm just going to burrow in down to the bottom of the pot and take a look, and you can see the bottom of the pot's dry. And now I'm going to drape a towel over the top of the pot because it's best to let the rice finish cooking off the heat. That way it gets nice and tender without getting blown out. And the towel helps collect any condensation in the pot and prevent it from dripping down onto the rice, which would make clumps. All right, it's been sitting off the heat with this little towel topper for about 10 minutes. Oh, that smells good. And so when you deal with cooked pilaf, you always want to be very gentle so as not to really beat up the rice and make it clumpy and sticky. So using a fork, we found, is the best way to really get in there and fluff it and loosen it from the pot. What, what Julia is really saying is, hey, listen, Oaf, don't go in and <laughs> stir it too hard, right? Well, the, yeah. we've seen that happen in the kitchen. You go in there with a wooden spoon and suddenly you have a risotto on your hands. So we're going to finish this dish with three tablespoons of cilantro and just half of these onions. The rest we'll leave as a topping on our individual bowls. And I'll just use this fork and gently mm. fluff the onions and the cilantro in there. Oh, this just smells amazing. And that is it. She's done. Nice big bowl for you. Yes, a large portion would be, I think, <laughs> in, I had to wait for this. You, you know. did. I'm going to put some of the reserved crispy onions on top. Mm. A little of this yogurt sauce. Mmm. Mmm, it's such a good flavor. It's got the lentils, which are earthy. The rice is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It has, of course, the onions. It has the yogurt sauce. Mmm. I agree. This is on a regular rotation in my mm. house. People want to know if we like the food here. Do we like the food here? <laughs> yeah, we like the food here. So for a terrific rice and lentil pilaf with crispy fried onion topping, we started by doing the onions. And we started them in cold oil, actually. Jump started the rice with a soak for 15 minutes. Jump started the lentils with a little bit of par cooking. Bake some of those spices in the oil, leftover oil from the onions to get some nice deep flavor. Assembled everything, finished it, let it sit for a little bit with the towel on top. And there you have it from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, a fabulous recipe from the 13th century. Majudra, which is rice and lentils peel off with crispy fried onion topping. You can get this recipe, all the recipes from this season, get our equipment ratings, taste test, and of course watch select episodes of this show at America's Testkitchen.com. Mm. I think I would have liked the 13th century. Mm -hmm. At least for this. At least for this.